Now, shall we call upon uh, the RC, Resident Coordinator of the United Nations uh, System in China, together with the whole UN country team representatives onto the stage. This is usually, every year, a grand occasion. So, shall we have uh, Mr. RC, please, uh, and your colleagues joining us, the representative from UN agencies in China. Please all come onto the stage. I know you are in different corners of this uh, uh, courtyard, please come over. It's going to be a big team, RC, right? <laughs> so please, Mr. RC, you're going to deliver a speech, but before that, we'll have all your colleagues uh, gather here, over here, yes, in here, over here, if you could, yeah, behind Mr. RC, yes, thank you so much. And we are going to have the representatives of all the UN agencies present here. Would you like to move a little bit forward to that end? Okay, thank you. And everyone, ladies and gentlemen, here. And may I have our colleagues to prepare the microphone for the representative of UN agencies in China. Mr. RC, please stay where you are. And we will have the representative of UN agencies in China to introduce themselves one by one. Shall we start from this wonderful lady? Yeah, you can just say who you are, you, which you are representing, and some brief words. Thank, Thank you. you very much. My name is Marina Laurent from the United Nations Department of Political and Peacebuilding Affairs. Good afternoon. My name is Simon Clements. I'm the Deputy Director of the World Food Program here in China. Pleasure to be here this afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Peng Zhong, um, Assistant Representative of UNFPA in China. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Dai Xiaoshu. I'm Deputy Director of the International Labour Organization, China Office. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nancy Zhang. I'm the UNV Country Coordinator. Welcome and nice to meet you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bai Guangqing. I'm from WIPO Office in China. Thank you. Good afternoon. Stephen B. Kagbo is my name. You need a representative here in China, overseeing Mongolia, DPR, Korea, uh, Pakistan, and uh, Iran. Good afternoon. Vinod Ahuja, um, representative at interim, uh, China, DPRK, and Mongolia for Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO. Uh, good afternoon. Andre Zaitsev, uh, Deputy Chief of Mission for IOM China, UN Migration Agency. Uh, good afternoon, Excellencies and colleagues. My name is Erasmus Mora. I'm the director of the UN Joint Program on HIV in China. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Tu Ruihe, I'm the head of UNEP China office. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Sang Ai Ling, the UNICEF representative in China. Uh, Good afternoon, my name is Li Yutong. I'm a head of Center for Sustainable Agricultural Organization, Regional Institution of ASCAP. Xia Wu Hao, good afternoon. Beate Trenkman, uh, President Representative of the United Nations Development uh, Program in, in China. Zhu Hua, Liang Hua Guo Kai Fa Ti Hua Shu, Zhu Hua De Dai Biao Ba Ya Ting. Xie Xie. Good afternoon, Xiao Hao. My name is Chao Jian Rong. I work for the World Health Organization. Good afternoon. My name is Adriani Wayanto, Deputy Representative of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Raphael Guillet. I am in charge of International Civil Aviation Organization. Good afternoon. My name is Smriti Ariel, UN Women Country Representative. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Vladimir Budnik. I represent regional office of United Nations Department of Safety and Security. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen on the stage. Mr. RC and also the representative of UN agencies in China, please remain on the stage. We're going to have a special photo opportunity of all of you. And at the same time, Mr. RC is going to deliver a speech. At that time, please remain on the stage together with Mr. RC, and then a special moment with the representative of Chinese government uh, as well on the stage. So let's have a photo together. Yes, we can move forward. Let's move forward. Yes. Move forward, as they say, right? Okay. 
It's an annual photo. 一年一度的重要的这样的一个全家福。来，我们摄像师准备好啊！好，三二一 ，Cheese。<laughs> Thank you. So please remain on the stage while Mr. R.C. delivers his speech. Mr. R.C., please. Your Excellency, Mr. Miao Diu, member of the CPC Committee of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Assistant Minister of Foreign Affairs, ambassadors present, I want to acknowledge the Ambassador of Cameroon, the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished guests, my incredible colleagues from the UN country team in China. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the United Nations country team in China, I extend a very warm welcome to all of you to our celebration today of the 79th UN Day. I wish to express our gratitude to the government of China, particularly the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, for the fruitful collaboration we have experienced during my tenure as the United Nations Resident Coordinator here in China. Your dedication to commemorating the special occasion with us reflects the spirit of cooperation which we deeply value. To all the ambassadors and our partners, your continuous support to bolster our shared commitment to realizing the United Nations Charter, the core goals of the Charter, creating a world where peace, human rights, and sustainable development are realities for everyone. To my colleagues in the UN country team, your hard work, energy, enterprise, and dedication epitomizes the very values we share as international civil servants. It is, for me, a true privilege to serve the United Nations in China with all of you. This year's UN Day not only marks 45 years of the UN's presence inside China, but also precedes the 75th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China in 2024. These milestones allow us to reflect on China's notable progress in improving the lives of its people. When our office opened in this very compound in 1979, 90% of the Chinese population was poor. With a per capita GDP, of a mere 180 US dollars. China was then a net recipient of aid from the United Nations. Since then, China has rapidly transformed, opening to the world, investing in human capital, infrastructure, and business, and growing its economy to an $18 trillion US, econ US dollar economy. This transformation has lifted over 750 million people out of abject poverty, helping to feed and sustain one-fifth of the world's population with just 9% of the world's arable land. I have observed textbooks examples of this transformation. This includes visiting a desertification control effort near Ordos in Inner Mongolia with the UN Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed last year in 2023. The Kubuchi Desert, the home of the most significant initiative involving two million kilowatt photovoltaic project, shows that China can often do best bringing together government, local communities, and enterprises to reduce soil erosion, mitigate sandstorms, develop renewable energy, and create decent job opportunities. During the visit, I was particularly moved by the stories from the children of desert herders being provided more access to quality education and even getting admission into some of China's top universities. Similarly, in Shenzhen, one of China's youngest cities, we convened a pre-summit of the future dialogue where we engaged with local business communities, including young leaders in the tech sector. 
Having visited Shenzhen multiple times, once a humble fishing village, this megacity epitomizes the remarkable transition that China has undergone in the lives and livelihoods of its people since the reforms and opening up. Today, hearing from these young future leaders in Shenzhen and elsewhere in China, and their vision to make the world a better place through new technology and innovation continues to inspire all of us in the United Nations here to support their ideas and help them realize their fullest potential. But there is much more work ahead. During his visit to China, the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres highlighted the rising global tensions in discussions with President Xi Jinping and other senior Chinese government officials. Conflicts are expanding with nearly 80 ongoing conflicts worldwide and poverty and hunger are unfortunately on the rise alongside growing inequalities. The worsening climate crisis further complicates efforts to make peace with nature. This challenging global situation hinders our progress towards achieving the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Sustainable Development Goals. The United Nations Secretary General has strongly advocated for rescuing the Sustainable Development Goals. To address these challenges, we need 21st century solutions through a more interconnected and inclusive multilateral approach that leverages global expertise. This encompasses the Pact of the Future that His Excellency Assistant Minister Miao referred to, an initiative designed to accelerate the SDGs through development financing reforms adhering to the Paris Agreement by promoting a more just transition from fossil fuels to ensure a habitable planet for everyone. However, achieving the 2030 Agenda is impossible without China's leadership or with China acting alone. As we wrap up the current cooperation framework next year and begin planning for the new one from 2026 to 2030, our priorities will continue to align with our values, norms, and standards in contributing to the country's next five-year development plan. We remain committed to supporting national ownership while collaborating with all our partners from academia, civil society organizations, and the private sector. During the 79th session of the UN General Assembly, the United Nations Secretary General stated, and I quote, the people of the world are looking to us and succeeding generations will look back on us. Let them find us on the side of the United Nations Charter, on the side of our shared values and principles, on the side, on the right side of history." End of quote. Now is the time to act, aspire, connect, and transform for our common future. Doing so requires us to give international cooperation and multilateralism a real chance. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to conclude my speech with a poem. In a world that feels fractured and bare, where hope seems lost in thin air. Let us reach out, hand in hand, strive together, break down barriers in every land. Though the skies above are dim, in our hearts a light can brim. For in each soul a common thread, a shared humanity, ever widespread. Mountains may rise, valleys may fall, but in the United Nations we stand answering a call to weave a tapestry, rich and grand, in unity and love across every land. Let us bridge, build bridges, not divide. Embrace our differences, stand side by side, in a song of peace, 
let voices blend, for in togetherness our world will mend. Through the storm, rise through despair, for love and hope can repair the fragments of the world as we are torn. Let a new dawn rise and solidarity be reborn. Through laughter, tears, joy and sorrow, together we forge a brighter tomorrow. In compassion, let's take delight in our common humanity. Let us unite. Thank you very much, Sheshit. <laughs>